Hello my friends, I'm Uncle Longbeard and today I will be talking with you about... No, not about phones. I will be talking with you about motorcycle navigation. I tried every single motorcycle navigation solution, including motorcycle dedicated sat navs, phone mounted on the handlebars using Google Maps, rugged phones. I also tried different solutions like Royal Enfield Tripper or Beeline. I also tried Android Auto devices. And I will tell you a bit more about pros and cons of each solution and I will tell you which do I think is the best in 2023 and possibly 24. I actually just came back from a long trip to Italy, 8000 kilometers, more than 5000 miles, and it was ridiculously hot. And I've got few thoughts about that and few new ideas about navigation. But let me start from the beginning. Let's start with the first one, which will be the dedicated satnav, like Garmin or TomTom. When I bought my Urban GS, BMW Urban GS, which I'm riding mostly, I have the uh, Garmin navigation, original Garmin uh, BMW Motorrad navigation, and I was really, really not impressed, <laughs> to say it lightly, with Garmin. Finding something on that navigation was ridiculous because it was so slow and irresponsive. Whenever you press anything on the screen, it was like, oh, massive lag. I absolutely hated that. Also, the price for those dedicated sat -navs is like, uh, at best 350 quid? Come on, seriously? It's the price of rather good phone. And I thought, you know what? I would rather use my phone because you know how it is with Google Maps. Just look at that. We are going somewhere and we want to find some place. Okay, let's go out. You see all those dots? Those are interesting places to visit. Anyway, let's turn on the... That's what I do usually. Turn on the terrain. So now I can see straight away that we've got some hills and there is some, let's say, cool road through those hills. Yeah, some forest waterfall. Let's go there. Yeah, that's how I... How I like to write. See, I can see the pictures, directions, okay. Da -da -da -da. And it's working. Yeah, <laughs> see, <laughs> it's so easy. So I thought it would be much better to use my phone, but I said like, hey, hold on, actually, my phone is not waterproof. So that's an issue, right? So I bought myself this Google Pixel phone, uh, which I thought it's a good idea because it's waterproof. But after buying one, I realized probably the motorcycle vibrations would kill that phone. I will give you the link to the video. There is a link to the video where I was testing uh, the motorcycle vibration dampeners for phones. And you know what? Nothing really works. So there is always a chance of destroying your phone. And I thought, hmm, that's not the best solution either. So what did I do? I took my old phone and actually I thought I will just install a few apps here and there and I will just use it. So was it a good idea? Yes and no. And let me tell you a bit more about that. Well, that phone is not waterproof either, but I don't care that much. Well, thing is, I was just using it for testing and I will tell you why. First things first though, the apps which I've got here is Sigic, which is based on TomTom map. I've got TomTom, uh, TomTom Go Right, uh, which requires connection. I've got Google Maps and a few others. Sigic works offline and the biggest problem with that is it doesn't have another SIM card. You would need to buy another SIM card for that. And that's more expenses, right? Another SIM card, another tenner a month or something. Or at least five pounds. But I think rather tenner those days. So is it a good idea? No. Okay, you can have some maps which are offline. And I've got maps ma, dot ma, or me, or whatever you pronounce it, and I've got Sigic, which I bought a license long time ago, so I've got it for free now. But I've heard nowadays it's kind of limited. But there are always some maps which you could use, even Google Maps, you can download the maps and use it. So that's all right. And it works much faster than any Garmin. It's much more responsive. It just works. But as I said, it's not the best solution because we still don't have live traffic information. We still don't have internet connection. We still don't have another really important thing. The police presence and the speed camera traps. 
which is illegal to have in some countries like France or Germany, but let's say you can get away with that because some navigation apps can just tell you about the danger on the road instead of police presence. So if the road is dangerous, you know what's going on there and technically you are not breaking the law, so that would be good. But the best apps require internet connection. So here we go again. So how to sort out the problem? You know what, actually using the phone would be the best solution. You can buy yourself phone, which is a military grade. Uh, there are those Chinese rooked phones, which are working like a treat. You can spend 200 quid and you can have another phone, which is spur phone, which is rooked, which is waterproof. And you can use it uh, instead of your own phone. You can put your SIM card there and just use it. But probably this one has got better camera, so still it's like not the best solution. Every single of those solutions has got some pros and cons. Mostly cons though. And few people were thinking, hold on a second, actually when I'm sitting into my car, I can use something which is called Car Audio or Android Auto. So basically your phone is just connecting to your device in your car and you are transferring Google Maps, whatnot, with the um, connection from your phone. But there is just screen in front of you, big screen, which is showing you directions and whatnot. And that would be brilliant on the bike. And you know what? Actually, some Chinese companies were starting to sell it. But beware, there are also companies in the UK and other countries who are trying to cash in on that. They are selling uh, devices for 200 quid, exactly the same devices. So if you are looking for one, go to AliExpress rather than buy here in the UK, especially not for 200 quid. But anyway, I thought there needs to be another solution and there needs to be a way to test it out. And yes, there is a solution and that's what I did. Look, I've got this old phone and let me show you something. That's my old phone. Does it look like a phone to you? I used a special launcher on that phone. I use the uh, rotation lock. So basically, right now you can see it looks like navigation. And I've got something here which is called head unit reloaded and that's an app who is allowing this phone to emulate car audio device so basically this phone can connect to that device without any issues and i will show you how it works okay so here we go this is my two phones right and now what i need to do first i need to lock that phone in the position so I've got a special app. You can turn any rotation and for me it will be horizontal because I use, I like to use it in horizontal. I've got this special uh, launcher, which is here. I've got a few navigations here. You can see those navigations for the droning, for TomTom Tom Go Ride and a few others. But the most important is obviously for me, it's Sigic, which I'm using, Petal Maps, well, and Google Maps and that one. So let me show you first things first. What we are doing now. Let's imagine we are going to Google Maps da, 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 da. and it's working. Now what I have to do uh, is start reloaded map and now it should automatically connect. Sometimes it doesn't but it says Wi-Fi credentials sent to the phone so we are just waiting. Uh, it's not the fastest, it's usually working this way. Look, ta-da! And what we've got here, we've got basically the actual app is working on that phone, Google Maps, but we've got all the connections. Look, see, it's not as responsive as it was on another phone, right? But it's still more responsive than bloody Garmin. And that phone is relatively slow. But hey, actually, what is important is it sent all the directions from my phone and it's just showing me that on that phone, on that screen. Yeah, responsiveness, my ass. <laughs> yeah, but here you go. But it's also that I can change the road to some other, add some points to that. Uh, find the petrol station, 
Ta -da -da -da. Yeah, it's telling me where are the gas stations and whatnot. Okay, it's cool. But also, you can use another map. You can also listen to the music, you can answer your phone calls with that, which is useful. Radar bot, this is pretty useful. Sejik is working as well. Uh, Waze is working, for some it's really important. And let's go to my work. Go now. Yeah, see? So that's working, right? That's working, and as you can see, the Waze is working perfectly well. I like to use another app, which is TomTom Tom Amigo. Show you that. Here we go. This is that one. And I like it to work just like that. I don't like to use it as a navigation standalone app, but I like to use it in overlay mode, where it tells me a bit about speed cameras, speed traps, police presence and whatnot. But unfortunately on Android Auto and possibly on CarPlay as well, it cannot work uh, as the uh, overlay app, because the multitasking is not working, um, so overlay mode is no-no. So in that case it can only work on my phone and yeah I can listen to that in my intercom. Yeah so now it's working and it's telling me my speed and it's also warning me about speed cameras and I can add some warnings into that. I've got all the voice communication from that phone uh, to my intercom and also that is telling me about the directions. I don't only see that I can hear that from that phone. And when I'm using the uh, Android Auto device, I mean the head unit app, I can choose if the sound is coming through that additional device, I mean my old phone in this case, or through my original phone, that one main phone, uh, directly to intercom. So my setup is basically my main phone is sending the sounds to my intercom. All those information about Blue Dangers coming from uh, TomTom Amigo app are coming to my ears or radar bot or whatever app you are using. So those sounds I can hear uh, in my earphones and also all the directions and everything else can be sent there as well. So you can set it all up and that's working like a charm. Now guys, uh, I think that's the best solution. Another phone, not that one because that one is temporary solution, but I will tell you what. Something like uh, Ulephone uh, 13 Pro is a good choice, uh, 180 quid or similar. Doogie is another brand or Blackview is another Chinese brand and you can buy a phone for 150 quid which will be waterproof reasonably fast and it will just work. And I think that this solution mixed with that is optimal. Is the best you can do nowadays. Uh, still cheaper than um, still cheaper than any Garmin, TomTom, or whatever there is. Well, people who are saying that actually uh, dedicated Garmin or TomTom navigations are so much superior to phones. I've got TomTom on that, and still TomTom is superior. Obviously, you can say, oh, if you've got Garmin or TomTom, I've got all the maps. It's waterproof. Blah 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 blah. This will be waterproof, uh, this will be shockproof and everything. And also on top you will get spare phone in case anything will happen on your trip to your original phone, you've got another one. So you can call 999 or whatever you want to call. Your boyfriend, your girlfriend, I'm not telling you who to call, it's just, you know, you can do that if you've got this solution. If you are cheapskate, you can also buy cheaper Eula phone, phone for even 50 quid. But have in mind, it won't be fast and responsive. So if you want a faster phone, you need to spend like 180 quid at best, probably 150. You can buy the Android uh, Auto device from China, you will pay 100 quid and it will be reasonably responsive and everything. But the phone will be still faster, more responsive, and you will have that alternative so you can use any app on that. And that's a really good thing.
also why possibly can Garmin dedicated satnav how possibly can it be better than, than this I cannot see why really because you can just have a tom tom on that one as well or Sigic as I do I paid 20 quid years ago and I've got all European maps and everything lifetime here you go obviously now it would cost you uh, you've got this stupid uh, monthly payments uh, almost for every single app including TomTom -Tom, but you can just pay for one month 9.99 for just your trip and you will have TomTom -Tom with everything which is coming from TomTom -Tom, like maps and everything so you will basically have TomTom -Tom in that so why TomTom -Tom would be better than TomTom -Tom? you don't need to pay 9.99 that's why but then you need to pay 350 for the device itself so if you buy a fast phone reasonably fast phone for 200 quid you've got 150 quid which will give you 15 years of yeah everything so yes my friends this is brilliant right i've got this old phone or any phone actually cheap rocked phone whatever waterproof hang on your handlebars don't worry about that and you can just screen your other mirror or your other device more or less mirror obviously uh, to to that phone and that's brilliant right nothing better and i learned why it's not brilliant so there are a few cons as always <laughs> right and first and biggest con is you need to charge two devices you need to charge that device it can be wired to your bike so no issue whatsoever but that phone is actually draining battery which will sit in my pocket and because it's transmitting the data to to that device it's actually draining the battery and also there is google maps actually working on that phone and because it's working on that phone it's faster so it's good right yes it is however google maps which you see on that device is not as responsive as you would like it to be so that's a con and another con because that navigation app is actually working on that device on your phone and it's in your pocket it's actually not only draining the battery but it's actually uh, making the phone to overheat especially it's in your pocket because it's safer and it's not vibrating so you keep it here right it's better well but not when you've got 42 43 degrees in Italy after five minutes that phone was basically overheating and you need to take it away cool it down or basically hang it on your handlebars to make it cooler from the wind so it's not cooled in your pocket and it's working like a treat when you've got 25 degrees when you are in the UK it will work like a treat but if you are in temperatures over 30 degrees and if that phone will be in your pocket nope sorry is the end of story so that solution is not the best solution for hot countries so what I was doing I was switching basically between uh, Android device uh, navigation and Sigic on that phone and more often I was using Sigic on that phone rather than Android Auto because of overheating problems and I will tell you what if you will buy that Chinese device you will have exactly the same problem never mind that device your phone will be overheating in your pocket so what can you do with that actually nothing if you've got uh, this car uh, carplay android auto device because it cannot run standalone apps it cannot run sejic or tomtom -tom. you can turn it off put it in your pocket or do whatever yeah just disconnect it close those apps see yeah nothing is working right now and then uh, you can just start Sigic or whatever offline map you've got and now it's not connected to your phone bunny by any means you're just starting it outside of Android Auto and yeah see that's working and you can basically look for let's say petrol station gas yeah, station let's go to this one get directions see it's working yeah so here it is i think that's the best solution Proceed because to the nearest road then head in direction to southwest 
Yeah, lovely, right? So, answering the question. What is the best solution in my opinion? The best solution is to have cheap rugged phone, which will be waterproof, which will be uh, on your handlebars in front of you, which will have installed that app, which will cost you five pounds or something. And that will allow you to run Android Auto or CarPlay on that. But also it will allow you to run any navigation in, in case when your phone is overheating. And for now on, in my opinion, that's the solution to go. As always, if you've got any questions, let me know in the comment section. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Cheers. And don't forget to subscribe and buy me a beer, if you will.